crafty friends it's jess from jesscrafts.com and today i am here with a card for the lawn fanatics challenge number seven which is to do watercoloring and i'm going to do a watercolor ocean background i had some of the mermaids from the lawn fawn mermaid for you stamp set already colored and cut and so i decided that that would be perfect you know they would they would go well with a watercolor background but i wanted to try something a bit different so i'm actually using distress re-inkers right here i'm using salty ocean crack pistachio and blueprint sketch i found that it was important to spray water onto my surface and then add the re-inkers because if i added the re-inkers and then sprayed it wasn't quite wet enough it was too dry and i got like dots of ink and I wanted something a little bit more natural. The reason that I went with Distress Reinkers is because they are really intense color so I didn't want to water them down too much. Trying to get this vibrancy of color by smushing Distress inks and spritzing water would be a lot more difficult because the ink doesn't come out as concentrated and that's why I felt like Distress Reinkers would really do well. Color Burst could give a very similar look however. So I sprayed my work surface, put down drops of Distress Reinker in those three colors, and then I smushed this watercolor paper onto it. This is the Tim Holtz Distress Ranger watercolor paper. All that's the, the Distress version and the Simple Ranger version are both the same. It's a really white watercolor paper, but it doesn't hold a lot of water well in my opinion. It kind of buckles under too much water. Originally, I didn't think I was going to cover the whole background. If I was going to cover the whole background, I probably, like if I knew I was going to, I would have probably used a better quality watercolor paper, but this worked out fine. It does a decent job. And I had found that the problem was using the cracked pistachio because I did want some lighter tones here and there. I wanted to add some variation. It quickly combined with the other two blues and made like one mixed color of all of them and I was trying to figure out how could I get a little bit more of the cracked pistachio green color in some areas and blue in others and one way that I was able to do that was to smush some of the cracked pistachio on before I put anything else on so like smush some cracked pistachio into it then smush some of the salty ocean or blueprint sketch onto it. Once I had the background going kind of interesting, like, you know, covered mostly in blues and greens, I decided to add a little shimmer because why not? Oceans will look great in shimmer. And rather than spritzing the shimmer directly on, I decided to dip it in shimmer spray. This was mostly because sometimes when you spray directly onto it, it pushes the color around more. And that's not really what I was looking for. And I also wanted to kind of get the shimmer to move around a bit more, maybe pool in certain areas. So I spritzed the shimmer spray onto my surface and then even mixed it with a little bit of water so it would be more fluid and move around. Because I want the shimmer to catch the light at different angles. I want to create a lot of interest and depth. And so I'm going to add to that in a few minutes with another layer. But I found at this point it was a good idea to dry the cardstock. I am working on like three different pieces at one time and as you can see some of them look a little bit different. The one on the very right was my first one that I don't, I didn't really like the way it turned out but I was kind of learning as I went. And I find that this is kind of fun to do when you're uh, doing a technique that isn't like perfect guaranteed outcome. If you make a few you can kind of pick your best one for your, you know, the project at hand but then use the others uh, as you see fit as well. So here I'm taking some white gesso, but white acrylic paint would work just the same. I just happen to have gesso. And what I'm doing is mixing it with some water to really thin it out. I don't want it to uh, be like thick covered white paint. I'm thinning it out and then I'm wiping it with a paintbrush all over my surface and I'm dipping the paint into it, which I'm dipping the paper into it again. I'm also going to flick on some watered down white gesso. It's important for it to be watered down so that it has that fluidity and it's more subtle. I think that this again adds some depth to the ocean by making some of the areas a little bit more prominent. The second time through, I just spritzed the plastic mat that I'm working on and then painted over it. 
Either way you do it to combine the water and the paint will work. I found that this method gave me a little bit more of an opaque look, uh, which you, you know depends on kind of what you're going for, what your aim is. But I think that a combination of the dipping and flicking give a little bit more interest than just doing one or the other. Um, some, dipping it isn't something that I tried in the past and I did like that result. And I'm going to try to do it to each of them. I found that giving it some good pressure really smushed the paint around and wasn't so splashy, which was kind of interesting. And then here I'm going to give it one final spritz. And this time I went with the spritz because it's dry and so I'm not really worried about the re-inkers moving around too much. But when it was wet, I didn't want to spritz and move the, anchor, the ink as, as much. And that was just for one final layer of shimmer. And then I am moving on to assembling the slider and I'm going to give some tips on how to use slider dies if you're not as familiar. But I did add some sandpaper here at the bottom. Rather than just adding brown paper or trying to make my own sand, I just bought some sandpaper at the dollar store. You can obviously get it at the hardware store, order off of Amazon, and that way when you're looking for that sandy look on your card, since cards don't need to be archival or anything like that, just use the sandpaper, cut a simple hill, and there you go. You have sort of an instant beach scene. It adds texture to the card, which I think really worked out well. I taped down the slider die from Lawn Font and ran it through my die cut machine. Then I'm going to take the sort of rectangle slider piece that was cut out. I'm going to put my card, so I put my panel down the card base, and then tape that little slider piece into place. That way, when the mermaid is sliding, it still appears to be pretty much one continuous background. I take the card panel up off of the card base and I'm ready to add my foam tape. The foam tape is going to be important so that the slider can move easily because again I want it to move very well and very easily. I'm going to use two layers of foam tape. You probably could use just one but then it kind of tends to catch and I really wanted it to work very simply. Like I don't want my recipient to have to fuss with it. I want it to look cool when they get it. And that's the other reason that I'm reinforcing it with a lot of foam in the center rather than just putting foam on the edges. And then if I put it in the mail, it could get smushed in the center. And then again, it won't slide very well. And so I'm really looking for it to be as good as possible. And so I'm adding that double layer of foam tape. This is the Scotch foam tape. Any foam tape will do, but um, just give it good coverage. Give it a nice thickness. Once you have some foam tape on the back, you're ready to assemble the slider. You're going to, uh, the simplest way is to use two pennies and some foam tape. I know there are some other products out there that you can use in place of those things, but uh, I just try to keep it simple since I don't have a lot of, you know, fancy supplies specifically for slider cards. So I taped some of the foam tape onto one of the pennies. Then I taped one of the pennies onto my mermaid image. I'm taking the foam tape penny placing it between the slider channel and then placing my mermaid on top of it. And so now my mermaid slides very easily as you can see. And obviously I haven't glued it down yet, but that one layer of foam that I put on the penny is obviously going to be thinner than the two layers of foam that I put on the panel. And that's what allows it to slide easily. That's why it's, I think it's important to do those two layers. And so you see, very simply sliding, a lot of movement, and I want it to look like when she slides down, she's sitting on the rock. So I considered where do I want to put my rock so that when the, basically the rock stops the channel and um, causes her to come to a stop rather than using the full length of the channel. And then there you see she kind of just sits down beside the other mermaid. And that's pretty much the shake or sorry, the slider aspect of the card. I'm going to do a couple of quick things to finish it off. Here I'm going to make my own piece of purple cardstock just because I wanted to tie in the color from the mermaid's top. There was no other purple on the card and also because my recipient likes purple so I thought it would be a good touch. So I took the same two colors that I used to color the mermaid and I created a simple sort of like, you know, ombre in terms of being dark on one side, light on the other. Create my own little strip of pattern paper with just some thick white cardstock. And then I stamped this happy birthday. 
the happy birthday happens to be from a sloth, the sloth some, I don't, I don't know the name of the stamp, but the sloth stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And um, uh, most of the products will be linked in the video description, but if I ever don't link something or if you have any questions, just please let me know in the comments below. And then I'm going to be able to add that. I do want to be careful that the mermaid, whether she's at the top or the bottom of the slider, doesn't cover the sentiment. So as you can see, I tested that out there before I glued it down fully. And so now you can read the sentiment no matter where she is. I, like I said, had some of these mermaids and uh, different things from the stamp set and from So Jelly because uh, I colored them up at the same time. I had them sort of ready to go in a bowl on my desk. They were all cut with my brother's scan and cut and colored with Copic markers. So I'm pulling different things out of this bowl on my desk and um, adding them around the card just to kind of finish off the scene. I think if you leave too much, even though the background is really pretty and I really like the way it turned out, I thought that if I left the ocean plain like that, it just wouldn't be as interesting of a card. It creates more of a scene to add a little fish or something in there. I went with a jellyfish just for size reasons. I thought that he was um, substantial enough. And whereas like the seahorse that comes with the mermaid set didn't quite add enough heft to that side of the card in my opinion. And so I wanted to add something from a different stamp set. But I am going to put that little seahorse in as well. I'm trying to create little visual triangles with them. The different, the shell and the starfish kind of create a triangle there. And, you know, just little ways of thinking about the placement rather than just sort of gluing them on randomly. I place things down and see how it looks before I, I glue them down. And Basically, that's it for the card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you liked this ocean background, you might enjoy my critter card class from Big Picture Classes, where I do feature some other ocean backgrounds. And follow the links in the video description if you're curious about the products or the Lawn Fanatics Challenge. Thanks for watching. Bye.